number one gives us angles A and B, and then it wants us to explain why sine of B is the opposite of sine of A and why cosine of B and A are opposites. So when we're looking at this, remember that on the unit circle or really on anything, um, your sign is equal to the Y value. So you're looking at your Y value. It's really Y over R, but if we just assume this is the unit circle, then it would just be equal to the Y coordinate. Um, and our cosine would be equal to the X coordinate. And that's because sine is equal to the opposite side. So across from the angle over the hypotenuse and um, cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Um, so when we're taking a look at this, one thing that we hopefully notice is that um, these two angles actually lie on the same straight line. So they're a half rotation away from each other, which means that their um, coordinates are opposite of each other. So if these coordinates are x comma y, then these coordinates are um, the opposite of X and the opposite of Y. So they would have the same radius because they're in the same circle. So if we're looking at the sine of B, so when we look here at the sine of B, so the sine of B would equal the opposite of Y over the radius, right? And then the um, sine of A would equal the Y value over the radius. And then we see that these are opposites of each other because this is opposite Y and Y. So that shows that this is true. And then pretty much the same thing for the cosine. So for cosine of B, so this angle here, the cosine is going to be the x coordinate over the radius. And for the cosine of A, and remember that's opposite x over r. And for A, that's just going to be x over r. And then we can see that those are opposites of each other. So this is true as well. Number two, which statements are true? Select all that apply. So all of these are looking into the quadrant system and determining whether sine and cosine um, are positive or negative. And so let's just draw out the coordinate system again and label the quadrant. So this is quadrant one. Remember that everything in quadrant one has a positive X and a positive Y. This is quadrant two. Remember this is a negative X with a positive Y. Quadrant three has a negative X value and a negative Y value. And then quadrant four has a positive X, negative Y. And then again, remember that sine connects to the Y value and cosine connects to the X value. And then remember as we're looking kind of the radius and all of this is positive. So sine is gonna take on the um, sine of the Y and cosine is gonna take on the sine of the X. So this one says, that sign is positive for an angle in the second quadrant. So basically is the Y coordinate positive in the second quadrant and that's true, so this is true. B says that um, cosine is positive in the second quadrant. So we're looking at the X value here, but the X value is negative, so cosine is actually negative in the second quadrant. Then is tangent positive or greater than zero in the second quadrant? And that's false because um, tangent is the ratio of y over x. So if we look at the y value, that's positive, divided by the x value, which is negative, a positive over a negative means that tangent is negative in the second quadrant. Now we're going to look in the third quadrant. So is the sign positive in the third quadrant? No, because the y value is negative. Is the cosine positive in the third quadrant? No, because the x is negative, so cosine is negative. 
And then is the tangent positive? So remember, tangent is dividing those two. So we've got a negative y value divided by a negative x value. So the tangent itself is going to be positive. Negative over negative is positive. So that one is true. Number three, the tangent of an angle satisfies that the tangent of theta equals 10. So which quadrant could theta lie in? So remembering that um, tangent is the ratio of y over x, that means that x and y either both need to be positive, meaning the first quadrant, or they both need to be negative, meaning the third quadrant. These are the two places that tangent would be positive. And I mean, if you want to write that out, that's going to be in the first quadrant. So in quadrant one, you're going to have a positive divided by a positive. So that equals a positive. And in quadrant three, um, you're going to have a negative divided by a negative, which equals a positive, or if you wanted to write that in words. Then estimate some possible values that theta could be um, and explain your reasoning. So we have that tangent of theta equals 10. And I like to write this as a fraction since tangent is the ratio of the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. So then this gives me the ability to kind of look at what the x and y could be. It's really the ratio. Um, but if the x-coordinate is 1, the y-coordinate is 10. So that's going to be something like this really close to um, 3 pi over 2. So really close to that um, 90 degree angle or three um, pi over two angle. So this would be a possible angle. And so you could just say close to pi over two if it was in the first quadrant. And then if it was in the third quadrant, then these would both be negative. So it'd be like negative one over negative 10. And um, then that would be really close to three pi over two. So not giving exact values, but close to 3 pi over 2 and close to pi over 2 would be some possible values of theta. Number four, evaluate each of the following. Um, and so let me just get this coordinate system drawn again here. So now we're looking at, and maybe I'll draw in the circle too. So this is kind of like the unit circle here. Um, so 5 pi over 4, so that's going to split kind of this top into fourths. So 1, 2, 3, 4, here's 5 pi over 4. And remember that this 5 pi over 4, um, the x and the y coordinate are exactly the same. So this gives us 5 pi over 4 gives us an isosceles triangle. And so our x coordinate and our y coordinate are exactly the same and we're dividing them for tangent, right? Now in this case, it's gonna be a negative y and a positive x. And when we divide the same number, then we're just gonna get negative one for that ratio. Sine of three pi over two, so three pi over two. So this is pi, one pi over two, right? Two pi over two, three pi over two. And so this coordinate on our unit circle would be the point 0, negative 1. The sine is equal to the y value. So this is going to be equal to negative 1. Then 7 pi over 4. So we've got 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pi over 4 is right here. Remember that that gives us um, an isosceles triangle again. Okay, all those pi over 4 reference angles give us isosceles triangles. And so you can maybe remember from the lesson that you have like a square root 2 over 2 for these sides. If you didn't, you could think about this um, doing Pythagorean theorem with the radius of 1. And then you know that these are the same length. So instead of calling them x and y, I'm just going to call them x. So then we know that 1 squared equals x squared plus x squared, since the legs are the same. So 1 equals 2x squared. So we could divide by 2, and we get 1 half equals x squared. 
So then we could square root this and the square root of one is one and then we would just have the square root of two. So that X value is one over square root two, so so would this. So that ordered pair would be one over root two and then the Y coordinate would be negative. So cosine would just be one over root two because positive X, negative Y. So positive one over root two. Could also rationalize that and have square root two over two. So those are the same. Number five, the sine of an angle in the second quadrant is 0.6. What would the tangent be? So we know that theta is gonna be in the second quadrant here. So that means that it's gonna have a negative X value and a positive Y value. And that makes sense because they told us the sine is 0.6. So remember that X squared plus Y squared is gonna equal one squared because when we're in our unit circle, the radius is one. So we have X squared plus 0.6 squared because remember the sine is equal to the Y value. And so then we have X squared plus 0.36 equals one since one squared was one. So then we'll subtract 0.36 from both sides. So we get X squared is equal to 0 0.64. And so then when we square root this, we get that X is equal to 0.8. So now when we're in the second quadrant, remember that that has to be negative. So it's negative 0.8 and then positive 0.6 for the sign. And then that gives us a hypotenuse of one. So this is gonna be negative 0.8 for the cosine. Number six gives us a triangle um, and tells us that it's isosceles and that it's in the unit circle. So explain why sine and cosine are the same when we look at angle A. So if we look at the sine of angle A, remember we're in the unit circle, so this radius is one. So the sine of A is gonna equal the opposite side, which is CB over the hypotenuse AC, which is just one. Okay, and then the cosine of A is going to equal the adjacent side, which is AB, over the hypotenuse, which is 1. And then since this is isosceles, we know that CB equals AB. So we know that instead of CB, we could just write AB, and then we can see that the sine and cosine are identical. So then use the Pythagorean theorem to show why two times the sine of a squared equals one. So remember that um, the X coordinate, like we said, on the unit circle is equal to the cosine. So if we take cosine of a and we square that, and then we add um, the sine squared because we'll have this side squared. So then plus this side squared, which is the sine of A, that will equal our radius squared. And our radius in the unit circle, remember, is one. So that'll equal one squared. And now we just showed in this previous one that cosine and sine are the same. So I can substitute in sine here instead of cosine. So now I get sine of a squared plus sine of a squared equals one. So then I have two sine of a squareds that equal one, and that's what I wanted to show. Number seven, triangle DEF is similar to ABC. The scale factor going from DEF to ABC is three. So explain why the length of AB is three times the length of DE. And that's because of the scale factor, right? So this one is three times bigger. So corresponding um, sides here are going to be equal to um, the original times the scale factor. So here, AB goes with DE. So whatever DE is 
Okay, AB will equal DE times the scale factor, and the scale factor is three, so that's just gonna be three times whatever DE is, and that would hold true for the other sides. So FE goes with CB, so we're gonna take three times FE, that'll get us CB, and then three times DF would give us AC. This way, they divide down to the scale factor. Um, and then explain why sine of A is equal to sine of D. So if we look at the sine of A, that's in that bigger triangle, okay, that's going to be equal to BC, the opposite, over AC, the hypotenuse. And then we know that BC is actually equal to 3FE, so I could just substitute that in. And the hypotenuse is equal to 3DF, so I could substitute that in. And then those threes will cancel. So the sine of A is equal to FE over DF. And if I look at the, whoops, the sine of D, the side opposite of D is FE. And the hypotenuse is DF. And then I see that the sine of A is equal to the sine of D. Number eight, which of the following is true for theta? So the sine of theta is less than zero. Well, we know in this coordinate, the x, or in this quadrant, the x coordinate is negative and the y coordinate is negative. And we know that sine um, goes with the y coordinate. And so sine is negative, so this one is true. So sine is positive is not true. Cosine is negative, so that's looking at the x-coordinate. That is true, okay? So cosine is less than zero, yes. Cosine is greater than zero, no. Then looking at the, um, is sine greater than cosine? <clears throat> so sine greater than cosine, and now remember, these are negative, so we want to be thinking about which one is closer to zero. And so in this case, the sine is this y value so that's a smaller um smaller negative number and then the cosine is equal to the x which looks to be a longer side so this one's going to be further away from zero so the sine is actually greater like if we just made up some numbers here um we could say that um you know, this coordinate we could say is like negative three-fifths, and we could say that the um, x-coordinate is negative four-fifths. And so the sine is actually larger since this length is shorter, so closer to zero when we go negative. <clears throat> 